Come on. How are you? Good to see you. Hello, darling. How are you? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, please. No. Oh, no. Thank you. Once again, glad you could join us for 3, 2, 1. And this week, we've got a great theme for you. Our theme is the Roaring Twenties. I don't know whether you remember those days. I certainly can't much. The Roaring Twenties, you know. I mean, the terrible thing in America, there were all those gangsters, people like Legs Diamond, who else? Bugsy Moran, and there was Babyface Nelson. And the fellow who had to look after all those guys, the Untouchables led by Elliot Ness. OK, Capone, you're a bum. And you're going to end up where all bums end up, on the hot seat. <laughs> Who can forget the great James Cagney in the Roaring Twenties? Remember that? Top of the world, Ma! OK, cops, come and get me! <laughs> Missed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Twenties, it took so long dying, they had to bury him in the Thirties. Here's a little character we want you to come along and meet. He looks okay on the surface, but deep down he's a bit of a gangster himself. That's our little booby prize, Dusty Bin. Here he is. All right, Dusty. Yes, you've done it again. There he is. Dressed up, of course, as a bartender in a speakeasy to go along with our theme of the Roaring Twenties. But uh, now listen, Dusty, is, is that a legal hooch? Yeah? Is it hot whiskey? How hot? I told you, this fella's got one more trick than the monkey. The people we've got to look out for this character, of course, are the people without whom we just couldn't do the show. They're our contestants. Greet them now, will you? Gil and Janet Davis from Leeds. David and Scylla Hockard from Jersey. Edmund and Catherine Goodland from Bristol. And it is our first couple tonight. They come from uh, Backwell, Avon, and it's Edmund and Catherine Goodland. Yes? Backwell, is that near Bristol? Yep. How near Bristol is that? Seven miles down the road. Just as that close as that, I yeah. see. And I see by the, your, your notes here that uh, your hobbies are gardening and watching political programs, Edmund, yes? Yep. Really? Is that what sort of political programs? Well, um, Panorama, those sort of All of them, huh? And gardening as well. Yeah. Your hobbies, Catherine, are stamps and collecting milk rubbings. Yes. What's milk rubbings? Well, you know what uh, brass rubbings are like. Yeah, you put the thing over yes. it, yeah? Yes, well, I collect the milk bottles. Yes. And take rubbings from the milk bottles. Mm. And have you got a lot of bottles? Like 200. <laughs> oh, well, it's nice to have them here. Make them feel at home, will you, folks? Glad you're with us. Have a good night. Here's Gil and Janet. Yeah, it's not far away either. Gil and Janet Davis, you come from Yeadon. Not far up the road here in Leeds. And uh, it says here, you two met, you met when Gil was returning his books and Janet, you were the librarian. Yeah. So he brought his books back and he took you out. That's right, yes. Oh, good. <laughs> and you're both involved in the very worthwhile leisure activity. Tell us about that, Gil. What do you do? Well, we're both involved with the Yorkshire Cancer Research Campaign. Yes. I'm the chairman. Janet's one of the two secretaries really? of the committee. Yeah. Uh -huh. And how long have you been doing that? This is about the 7th or 8th year now. Really? A worthy cause, obviously. That. And, of course, when you're raising money for that sort of charity, you have to dream up all sorts of ideas to get money, don't you? What have you done in your endeavours? Well, one thing was on a maiden flight. I'd never been in a plane before. I jumped out. <laughs> you parachuted out on your first flight? Yeah. You didn't like the plane that much, eh? Uh, <laughs> really? Didn't like the parachuting out. I bet you did. <laughs> did you come down OK? Was it yeah. all right when you got to the bottom? Right, yeah. I love this bit here. You, you both pushed a bath and a toilet from Scarborough to Scarborough from Leeds. Not on our own. Oh, good. <laughs> a commode of transport. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody tried to thumb a lift, did they? No. <laughs> Can you imagine saying, no, I'm sorry, someone's using it at the moment. We do. <laughs> Make them feel at home, would you? Good to have you with us. Nice to hear you. Here's David and Scylla. Uh, David and Scylla Hockard. Yes, Hockard, who yeah. are from a, good, a lovely part of the British Isles, Jersey Channel Islands, yes? Mm -hmm. A lovely part, of course. And according to your details, you, you're both in Overseas Voluntary Aid, an Overseas Voluntary Aid organization. Now, what do you do in that? We go out to uh, underdeveloped countries, mainly in Africa, and really? build uh, clinics or uh -huh. whatever needs to do. And where have you been in Africa? Uh, Zambia. You've been to Zambia? Yeah. And you've built clinics and stuff? Yes, first year we went and built a um, bungalow, second year was a clinic. And how long would it take to build a clinic? Three, Three weeks. weeks. Three weeks? Yeah, 
three weeks. I've waited in a clinic for three weeks. <laughs> really? Yeah. Three weeks. Three weeks. Yeah. Even had the glass in the windows. Is and that the right? Water yeah. was running. And they yes. say it can't be done. That's smashing. Are. Good. And Silla, this is interesting. You're the only honorary policewoman in Jersey. That's correct. Is yes. that right? Yes. So do they give you those same sort of powers? I mean, what are you yes. allowed to do? I can go out and arrest anybody. I've got the same powers as any policewoman. So watch it. So watch it. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, it's a bit of a difference. I mean, everybody likes a drop of that over there. Mm -hmm. it's so true. And, of course, the speed limit is only, what, 40 miles an hour? 40 miles an hour, that's correct. You can yes. have a booze up for a pound and a burn up at 40 miles an hour. Good. Glad <laughs> 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 to have you with us. Nice to have you with us. OK, there are three couples for the night. Now we have our quiz. There's two rounds of questioning, remember. At the end of the quiz, we lose the couple with the lowest amount of money, leaving the remaining two couples to play through part two. Let's meet the lady with the questions. Caroline Monroe is here. Here we are. And again, the Roaring Twenties. Yeah. I've got to be honest, Carol, a great time. I mean, when you look at all the costumes, I, I, wouldn't be be I wouldn't be at all worried if that came back. Would you like that kind of style to come back? It's pretty, but not very practical. Oh, I'm sure of that, but it's not bad on the eye, is it, folks? OK, oh. let's play the quiz, shall we? OK, it's Catherine and Edmund there. One of those three envelopes is for you. Catherine has decided that's the one. Good, thanks, Caroline. You know, we like you to answer alternately. Catherine, ladies first. Two ways we can stop you if you make a mistake or run out of time. And if you don't know an answer, believe me, say don't know or pass. It's easy that way to build up your score. Because once you have answered, I must accept the first answer, or part of the answer yes. that you give me. And we give you one to start with. Good luck to you. This question here is about men and women who excel in one particular sport. We will give you the name of the sportsman or woman, and we want you to give us the sport they are particularly good at. Now, Naomi James is particularly good at sailing. We'll start you with that one. Naomi James and... Sailing. Ray Reardon. Snooker. Joe Dury. Tennis. Willie Carson. Horse face. David Moorcroft. Horse. Larry Holmes. Pass. Christopher Dean. Horse. Ollie Campbell. Pass. Fatima Whitbread. Pass. Imran Khan. Squash. Ah, uh, no. <laughs> not, not quite. Imran Khan. Cricket, the great uh, Pakistani uh, cricketer, yes. Fatima Whitbread was that marvellous javelin thrower. We have Ollie Campbell, of course, rugby union. Christopher Dean, the marvellous skater, right? Larry Holmes, heavyweight champion, the boxing. David Moorcroft, that great runner in athletics. But you have four right. A good start gives you 40 pounds. That's a nice start. 40. OK, Caroline. One of those two, Janet. That's the one for you. Good. OK. Same procedure. Answer alternately. And if you don't know an answer, say don't know. Here we go. The question here, again, is about men and women who excel in one particular sport. We will give you the name of the sportsman or woman. We want you to give us the sport they are particularly good at. Duncan Goodhue is well known for swimming. We'll start you with that one. Duncan Goodhue and... Swimming. Virginia Wade. Tennis. Bob Willis. Cricket. Barry Sheen. Pass. Tom Watson. Pass. Jahanga Khan. Jahanga Khan. Pass. Ed Moses. Boxing? No, I'm sorry about that. It's athletics. He's a great hurdler, sprinter. Ed Moses, the wonderful American. Yahanga Khan was the one I think our number one couple were thinking of. He's a great squash player. Tom Watson, a great golfer. And Barry Sheen, of course, motorcycling. That's what they all should keep it quiet. But you've done all right. Three right gives you 30 pounds to start with. It's pretty tight at the moment. Let's go on. Last envelope it means that's the one for David and Scylla, and they're holding hands nice and tight. Good luck. Question here again is about uh, men and women who excel in one particular sport. We will give you the name of the sportsman or woman. We want you to give us the sport they are particularly good at. Jeff Hunt is well known for squash. We'll start you with that one. Jeff Hunt and... Squash. Jack Nicklaus. Golf. Kenny Dalgleish. Football. Alan Wells. Pass. Jane Torville. Skating. Ivan Lendl. Eddie Macken. Horse jumping. Robert Del Castello. Robert De Castello. Pass. David Gower. Cricket. Pat Eddery. Um, horse racing. Ah, yes, indeed. Just got it right. <laughs> Robert De Castello. I thought it was Del Castello. It's not. Robert De Castello is a marathon runner. Ivan Lendl, the great tennis player. And, of course, Alan Wells. Can you think now? Yeah, she's yeah, a runner, yeah, a sprinter, yeah. a terrific athlete. Never mind, you've done well. Seven right, 70 pounds. Well done. So, 
End of the first round gives us couple number one on... No, couple number two, sorry, they're on 30 pounds. Couple number one have 40 pounds in the lead at the moment, or couple number three, David and Silla from Jersey there. 70 pounds they've got. Well done. Good luck. So, Edmund and Catherine, this time you're going for 40 pounds for each correct answer. One of those is for you. Thank you once again. Caroline, bye. Again, we'll let you have one to start. Good luck. The question is about words in standard dictionaries which begin with the letters M-A. We give you the definition, you give us the word. Words beginning with M-A. A black and white bird that collects things is a magpie. We'll start you with that one. A black and white bird that collects things is a... Wooden hammer with a large head. Mallet. Feeding box in a stable. Pass. Another word for conjurer. Magician. Disguise for the face. Mask. Foot race of 26 miles. Marathon. Large imposing house. Mansion. Person skilled at shooting. Pass. Shelf above the fireplace. Mantelpiece. A builder in stone. Mason. Indeed, a mason it was. A person skilled at shooting is a marksman. Ah, <laughs> I know, it's not easy when you sit there, is it? It really isn't. And the feeding box in the stable, can you think of that now? It's a, way, it's a manger, manger. away in a manger, however. Good. 320 pounds you got at the end of that round. 320. Smash it. Right. Okay, Bill and Janet. One of those two is for you. So you're going for 30 pounds for each correct answer. The question is about words in standard dictionaries which begin with the letters N-E. We will give you a definition. You give us the word. Words beginning with N-E. Now, your sister's son is your nephew. We'll start you with that one. Your sister's son is your... Nephew. Right. Opposite of positive. Negative. People living near you. Neighbors. Part connecting head to body. Neck. Meshed fabric used by fishermen. Neck. Home made by a bird. A home made by a bird. Nest. Daily publication of recent events. Newspaper. Another name for Holland. Netherlands. A gas used in illuminated signs. Neon. And a peach-like fruit with a smooth skin. Oh, the buzzer just beat you there, Gil. It was on the tip of your tongue. It was a nectarine. Indeed, not bad, though. Nine right gives you. Nine three, sir. 270 pounds. <laughs> nice one. Good job. Oh, the same. Thanks, Caroline. Again, the last envelope mean that's the one for Scylla and David, who are going for 70 pounds for each correct answer. And again, your question is about words in standard dictionaries, which begin with the letters L-O. We will give you a definition. You give us the word. Words beginning with L-O. Another name for tetanus is lockjaw. We'll start you with that one. Another name for tetanus is... Lockjaw. Money that is lent. Loan. Storage space under a roof. Loft. Record of ship's voyage. Log. A sweet on a stick. Lolly. Rhyming slang for head. Pass. Member of the nobility. Lord. A zero score in tennis. Nil. No. <laughs> oh. Ah. Ah. <laughs> I felt from then, did you? <laughs> oh, what a shame. He was, he was really hell-bent on that one. What a shame. I don't think you need me to tell you what it was, David, do you? It was love, in fact. Love, what a shame, yeah, Neil, yeah. indeed. What a shame. Uh, Rhyming slang for head was loaf. Loaf of bread, <laughs> head. However, you've done all right. 420 pounds you got. Uh, 420. Uh, <laughs> what a shame. <laughs> so... Uh, <laughs> The two words given to each of our couples this week spelt out M-A-L-O-N-E, Malone, as in Bugsy Malone, which of course ties in with this week's theme of the Roaring Twenties. But at the end of our quiz this week, we do have couple number two, that's Janet and Gil, they've got 270 pounds. Couple number one, Edmund and Catherine have 320. The winners, couple number three, that's David and Silla from the Channel Islands, 420 pounds. <laughs> So, again, at the part of the show I always hate when we lose one of our couples, you know, it's always that chance you have to take, whether you say it or whether you don't, but it's not a bad night's work. I mean, is that going to go to the charity or not? I know. <laughs> not, this you, time. not this time, I don't blame you. You worked very, very hard for that tonight. There's the money. There's, of course, Thank that you. ceramic dusted bin. Thank you once again, Thank you, Janet. Nice to meet you. Take Thank care. You. Mm. God bless. Give them a round of applause, folks. Thanks, Jill. God bless. Thank you. Okay, that's it. We're away just for a couple of minutes. We'll see you soon. Three, two, one. Don't go far now.
OK, yes, it's part two of three, two, one. Remember, this week's theme is Roaring Twenties. We've got Edmund and Catherine, who are from Avon. They're playing right through part two against David and Silla, who are from Jersey and the Channel Islands. You know what happens, folks, here. At the end of each one of the items we show you, someone will come to the table, leave a clue object, and read a rhyme. When we have three on the table, I'm going to ask each of you to select one you'd like to reject if you're going to be the lucky couple who gets through to where the big prize is and that dusty bin is waiting for you. So good luck to both our couples. On with our theme, as I say. And we're going straight over to the Brian Rogers Connection, who are about to take over a speakeasy. <laughs> Great routines every week, and you're working all the time. I say this to Brian and every one of you dancers that come in every week. Now, listen, you're not working more. He's not pushing up more work, is he? Actually, Ted, yes. What are you doing now? We've been asked to do a children's royal variety performance. Oh, that's terrible, isn't it? Yeah. When are we going to see that pretty soon? I think, yes, sometime Great. in the future. Great. Smashing. Good luck on that. And what are you going to leave these folks handed the clue? It's a shooter. A shooter? Okay. Yeah. Now, what about their rhyme? The rhyme is, it rolls along on air, but this may not seem fair. As short as that. They're pretty short this season. That's the number one item. Sandy, thank you, lovey. Thank of you. the Brian Rogers Connection. Thanks, Sandy. <laughs> so, is it too early, Edmund? Any idea what you think that could be? What do you say, Catherine? Oh, no, idea. no idea. How about you folks from Jersey? Oh, David? It's about a holiday. It's about a holiday? <laughs> you need a holiday <laughs> in the Channel Islands? <laughs> what do you say, Silla? trip to Jersey. Hydra, hydra, well, <laughs> at least a little early, the first item on yeah. the table. Let's get on, have item number two, shall we? You know, the Roaring Twenties, of course, were famous for the bitter rivalry between all the gang leaders. Now, two such leaders were the Don and Babyface O'Reilly. <laughs> it's a Don in. Is he clean? <laughs> I mean, is he carrying a heater, blockhead? <laughs> I want 
wonder what brought you here, Clyde. A 23B changes the gas works and a 10A drops you outside the door. <laughs> no smart-ass talk. Tell me, what's the news? O'Reilly's out of the pen. And he's headed this way. Babyface O'Reilly. Yeah, Babyface O'Reilly. <laughs> what are you gonna do, Don? For a start, I'm gonna shoot that piano player. <laughs> Don't worry, it only creased the top of his head. It was just a parting shot. After a gag like that, I think I'll finish him off. Yeah. Sounds like Babyface has arrived. He sure has. <laughs> on my pram. <laughs> Dummy. Here, you can have mine. Take his gun, Lucky. Hold on, Lucky. You ain't that lucky, Lucky. <laughs> I see you're still using that little pea shooter. Yeah, well, that's because I'm still wearing the nappies, you see. <laughs> Had to get out of the pen, baby face. Well, I just climbed over the wall when Mammy wasn't looking. <laughs> so what do you want? Well, I think it's time I had a piece of your action. <laughs> you ain't got the dough. No, well, I don't want the pizza parlors. No. No, and I don't want the drugs either. Oh, I suppose you want the girls. The girls? Girls are silly. They get on my nerves, girls. I hit them and look at the... No, I want the speakeasies, the booze, and the numbers racket. And the numbers racket. <laughs> What are you gonna pay for all this? I got the payment right here, Don, okay? There's Lolly. <laughs> Big Lolly. And there's plenty more where that came from. <laughs> Savvy, baby face. Nice try. But this is one offer I can refuse. <laughs> uh, baby face. Uh, <laughs> Well, that's, I guess that's got him licked. <laughs> so the south side is all mine, boys. Give me a large one, Lucky. <laughs> it's cold again, Lucky. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Tony. How are you, Tony? How are you? Good to see you again. Tony Spear, thanks for calling up here to see us on 321. Pleasure. You're always a busy guy, I know, but you've been doing something very, very, very important recently. Yeah, yeah, I, I've done a film with Barbara Streisand called Yentl. Yes, the yes. film. The marvelous. And we hear that it might be on the short list for the Royal Film of I'm the Year. I'm pretty sure knowing that lady. Well, she is marvelous, as we all she think she is. She is, she is great. I play the part, believe it or not, of a Jewish tailor. Well? Yes, yes. <laughs> no, well, you know, I, I didn't want to get typecast. <laughs> Good to see you, Bernie. What are you going to leave them as the clip? Uh, well, I have brought here a pen. A okay. pen, a nib. Okay. Uh, and there it is. Pen. Okay, a pen is the old clue for fashioned you? pen. Yeah. And the, uh, the rhyme I have to read, oh, it's... Let me put the bins on. You can't do it without the bins. Uh, <laughs> Everyone succumbs to those in the uh, air. Tempest fugits. <laughs> Babyface has done the dawn. With this, though nice, your luck has gone. There you are. Thank you very much indeed. Bernie Spear, ladies Thank and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you, Bernie. Good luck. Look out for Yankel. Well, now. Uh, we brought you in a pen and you've heard that rhyme. Any idea about that, David? That, like dusty bin, right? that sounds like Dusty Bin to you. Yes, you too. <laughs> How about you, Stella? Oh, that sounds like... I wonder what you're going to say at the end of the next one, because that will then be three on the table, remember? Yeah. Then we've got to go through that elimination question. We will now go on have item number three. And our customers in the speakeasy are in for a real treat right now. For here to explain the birth of the blues is the very talented Helen Gelzer. Oh, they say it's 
some people long ago were searching for a different tune, one that they could crew as only they can. They didn't know just what to use, but that is how the blues really began. They heard the breeze in the trees, singing wee melodies, and they called that the star. That is some, some voice, that really is. Listen, you've had so much success, we know that. I first saw you, of course, in the great Bubbling Brown Show. Uh, yes. You were up here with si Side by Side, of course. Yes. But you just come back from the continent? Yes. And where uh, were you over there? Specifically, Monte Carlo. Oh, that's tough, isn't it? Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a tough thing A little bit of gambling. Oh, did you? No, 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 no. <laughs> you had a good time? Right? Yes, it was wonderful. Thank you. Great, great number. What are you going to leave them with the clue? Booties. Booties. Oh, OK. There's your clue. And how about the rhyme? A note in a horn and the blues are born. And that's all there is to that one. Uh, uh, there it is. Lovely. Helen Gelzer. <laughs> Thank Good luck, Helen. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Nice what a singer. Terrific. Well, you both sort of leapt on. What do you think about that one? Well, booty could be money. Booty could be money. Oh, yeah. What about you? What do you think? Treasure could be a car. Uh-huh. Oh, I see. Well, you've just heard that from Helen. I can, I can refresh your memory on the first two again. Remember, the shooter was brought in number one item by Sandy of the Brian Rogers Connection. She said, it rolls along on air, but this may not seem fair. That was number one item. Number two was the pen brought in by Bernard Spear, the pen. He said, babyface has done the don with this, though nice, your luck has gone. So, there we are. You've heard the three of them now. So you've got to make up your mind what one you want to get rid of. <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll get rid of the pen because... Big Nip backwards is bin. I see. Yeah, but uh, that's nip. <laughs> but the actual item is a pen, remember. You going to stick with that? How about you, David? Any idea? Yeah. Silla? Yeah, I think yeah. get rid of you want to get rid of the pen? pen? Yeah, yeah. And you too? Yes, please. Well, you've got them all on that now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that, that's settled, is it? Yeah. All right, whatever, whoever gets through then to part three, good luck to both of you here. Unfortunately, only one couple can go through. That's what's going to be rejected, the pen brought in by Bernard Spear. Here is the elimination question. Put your hands 
Let go of her hand now, Edmund. You can do that. <laughs> no. Put your hand. No, no, get it. Put your hand beside that that uh, button there. I'm going to start reading the question. When you think you know the answer, hit the button and answer. Uh, if you're wrong, I must offer it to the other couple. Again, if you answer before hitting the button, I must offer it to the other couple. So, good luck to you. Here it is. Here's the question. This is a city. It's in the United States of America, and it's in the state of Illinois. It was always in the news during Prohibition. Cincinnati. No, it's not Cincinnati. No, no, it's not. What do you say? You've got an opportunity. Chicago. It's Chicago. Yes, indeed, David, you've done it. Oh, yes. Oh, what a shame. Wow, You were nearly there, though, Edwin, weren't you? Oh, dear, dear, dear. It's so close, you know, you hit the button, you've got to answer, and there you are, I'm afraid. It was, was Chicago, you had the chance there of taking it, and you did it, that means you're through. Good luck, well done to you, and we have to say goodbye to you, what a shame, never mind. There's Caroline with the money you won in the quiz, of course. How much was it, Caroline? 320 pounds. 320 pounds, folks, it was. There's that ceramic dusty bin. And if you'd... Uh, if you'd just like to take a little look across there, Bonnie has a consolation prize for you. There you have two limited edition porcelain figures. There's Deauville and Monte Carlo. I think they're terrific, okay? They're going to go Thanks very much for coming along. Evan, take care. Nice to meet you. You've been a lovely couple. All our love to everybody in Backwood. Take care, Catherine. Give them a round of applause, folks. Take care. Thanks a lot for coming. Good luck. Bye-bye now. Oh. Well. Oh, yes. Oh, there you are. You breathe again. Yeah. You had the chance. If it had been right, of course, it would have been good night yeah. to you, too. That's the way the game goes. You're through. Good luck to you. Well, at least we know exactly what it is you've rejected. It's the pen brought in by Bernard Spear. We'll see you after the break. Good luck. <laughs> Welcome to part three of three to one's Roaring Twenties and our final couple hoping to take a good prize home tonight is David and Scylla Hockhard from Jersey and the Channel Islands. Okay, you've got through to this part of the show, which is no mean feat, I'm sure you'll agree with <laughs> yourself. And you've rejected the pen, right? Yeah. Brought in by Bernard Spear and we know what you hope it is, so let's see exactly what it is. Babyface has done the don. With this, though nice, your luck has gone. Have you had any other thoughts about it? I think you're having it now, aren't you, sir? <laughs> you're having it. Let's have a look and see what it says. Babyface has done the don, and in the sketch, there were reference to, references there to Babyface getting out of the pen. Has Bernard brought you in a pen? Perhaps this had something to do with getting out. With this, though nice, your luck has gone. If you're getting out of this, you might have gone. Not nice, but to Nice. It's a 3 2 1 holiday to France. Take a look. <laughs> Yes, we were going to fly you from Heathrow to Nice and all the wonderful atmosphere of the Millionaire's Playground. The beautiful coastline as you fly by helicopter to Monte Carlo for a holiday at one of the leading hotels in that delightful resort. Eight days to sample the gastronomic delights and tour the breathtaking sights or just sit around relaxing in an area which is as popular today as it was in the 20s. Eight days of sightseeing, swimming and sun and those wonderful romantic Mediterranean evenings and for a bit of excitement perhaps an occasional flutter at the world famous casino I think where Helen Gelzer was playing. Now, another marvellous 3 2 one holiday. Not exactly Dusty Ben, was it, huh? <laughs> oh, dear. There you are. What a shame. Okay, that's what we've got to keep our eyes on right now, remember? A fabulous holiday. There are still three great prizes, but there's that naughty booby prize. Okay, let's get on then and have item number four. You know, in the Prohibition days, you know, to cover the illegal activities of the gang leaders, they had to have certain fronts, and one such front was the flower shop. But even that could be misleading. Mister, I beg your pardon. You needn't apologize to me. They're your lungs. I wonder if you could help me. <sighs> Personally, I doubt it. But I suppose it depends on what you want. Well, I'd like you to make an arrangement for me. Make an arrangement? Yes, an arrangement. Oh, I see, an arrangement. Who sent you, Buster? 
No one sent me. I just came in to organize the arrangement. Do you think I was born yesterday? Don't answer that. Now look, Buster, whose outfit are you with? Orpington Sinfonietta. Sounds Italian. <laughs> now, about this arrangement. Um, pardon me. Who? Pardon? Who? Who? Oh, who's he for? Oh. My girlfriend. Your girlfriend? Yes. She's gorgeous. Jeez, what's she done? Well, last night she said yes. You mean to someone else? No, she said yes to me. Jeez, I hate to think what you would have done if she'd said no. Still, I guess it's her funeral. Her funeral? Get it? Her funeral? <laughs> Okay, wise guy. So what sort of arrangement do you want us to make? Well, how much are they, roughly? Well, it depends on how you have it done. But they cost about $500. $500? I was thinking of paying somewhere near a 10. What would that get me? Trouble. In that case, I'll just take some cut flowers. No. Mister, the flowers ain't for sale. <laughs> oh, come on. A florist that doesn't sell flowers, what do you sell? <sighs> Rods? I don't think. <laughs> Bootleg hoots? I don't drink. <laughs> and goyles? Hi. Don't see why not. <laughs> <laughs> You, you shouldn't have bothered. You didn't have to. Oh, come on. <laughs> hey, listen, it's always good to see you up nice here with us on 321. And what's the clue here? It's, it's 15 what? red roses. Oh, that can't be bad for a start. Okay, that's the clue. 15 right. red roses. How about that rhyme? Your chance is going to pot, but after you've scoffed the lot. And that's all there is to that one. Not an easy one, Silla, eh? Thank nice lovely one. Linda Llewellyn. Bye-bye, love. Thank you. Mm. Linda Bye. Llewellyn, ladies and gentlemen. Bye. What do you say? Getting harder, is it, Silla? Haven't a clue on that one? No? Well, I can read uh, one of the other two again. Shoe to remember brought in number one item by Sandy of the Brian Rogers Connection, or the boot is brought in by Helen Gelser. Which of those two would you like to hear? Yeah, you want to hear the shooter? Okay, yes, Sandy brought in the shooter and said, it rolls along on air, but this may not seem fair. So, three on the table, one has to be rejected, and we haven't got rid of the bin yet. Which is always a difficult. Uh, I don't want to keep rubbing that in. I just, I just thought I'd tell you, you know. We think Dusty rolls on air, so we'll get rid of the uh, shooter. Yes? Yeah. We'll do that? Yeah. Yes. Is that okay? Why not? Yes, is that all right with you? Yeah. Oh, yes. No. They're right behind you. <laughs> and, and they're very sharp on them. You know what they're like. Yeah, you want to get rid of that? We'll yeah. get rid yeah. of the shooter. All right, then. You're going to get rid of the shooter. Brought in number one item by Sandy of the Brian Rogers Connection. It rolls along on air, but this may not seem fair, is what she said. Keep our fingers crossed for you. Sandy brought you in the shooter, which was this mini submachine gun. It rolls along on air, she said. Well, Dusty, as you say, rolls along, not on air. His wheels aren't pneumatic. But this may not seem fair. Well, we've mentioned mini with submachine gun rolling along on pneumatic tires, and now may and fair. You've rejected the mini Mayfair. <laughs> Yes, says David. Not just a wonderful prize, but David says a nice colour too, huh? Yeah, terrific prize. OK, sit tight. Just keep thinking about Dusty Bin. Right now, to bring our, bring our Roaring Twenty show to a barnstorming finish, who better than John Chilton's feet warmers? And ladies and gentlemen, Mr George Melly. So brave, I seem to wise from the new. I realized the thing I'll do. I looked at Kate, she was in a trance. And then I knew it was in her dance. All the boys are going wild over Katie's dancing style. I wish I could chin and sister Kate, shaking like a jelly on a plate. My mama wanted to know last night while the boys treated Kate so right. Everybody in the neighborhood 
squish steak, shimmy, and a sound does good. Time ain't be late, but I'll be up to date when I can shimmy like my sister Kate. I'm shouting, shimmy like my sister Kate. Sister Kate, shaking like a jelly on a plate. My mama wanted to know last night how the fun treated Kate so right. Everybody in the neighborhood wish they could cheer me and it's understood. I may be late, but I'll be up to date. But I'm cheering like my sister Kate. I'm shouting, cheering like my sister Kate. I wish I could cheer me, sister Kate, shaking like a jelly on a plate. My mama wanted to know last night. I say, I, I love the series you do, Good Time, George, which is from that uh, theatre where in Suffolk somewhere. Yes. Whereabouts is it? I've forgotten its there name. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> Barry St. Edmund. That's it. Yeah. You're going to do another series of those? Another series, not yeah. from Barry. We're going to really? use another theatre this time. We've yeah. had enough of us there. Yes, and have you done any more writing lately? Yes, I've got a, a book coming out about my childhood in Liverpool in the really? spring. It's called Scouse Mouse. Scouse Mouse. Mm. Now, there you are. I didn't know that. You were born in Liverpool. I certainly was. Really? Yeah. Another one you can't move from. Uh, right? The Liverpool Mafia. Indeed. Scouse <laughs> Mouse. Well, we look forward to that. These folks haven't got rid of the bin, which is a bit of a problem for them right now, but yes. you've got a clue for them, have you, George? I think so. I have it concealed behind this envelope. Oh, it's a rusty it? nail. Don't ask me what I'm going to do with it. Uh, no, don't worry, it. Or even where it's been. But it's <laughs> a rusty nail is the clue. See yeah. it? Right. How about the rhyme? The rhyme. Written by Sir John Betjeman, aren't they? Of course, yeah. only the best. <laughs> <laughs> to double your chance tonight, say cheerio and sit tight. That's all there is to that, and Scylla looks as though she doesn't like that one either. Thank George Milley. Thank, Thank you very much, George. George Milley, ladies and gentlemen. Good luck, mate. Bye bye. So, don't like that one either, do you? No. Any idea what you think it might be? Could be. It could be. I don't know. Well, one um, of the other two you can hear again, the boot is brought in by Helen Gelzer, or the 15 Red Roses brought in by Linda Lou Allen. Which of those two would you like to hear? Um, the booties. You want to hear the booties? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Helen Gelzer brought them in and said, a note in a horn and the blues are born. That's it. That's all there was to it. Perhaps it's a bin, so we'll get rid of it. <laughs> really? She's yeah. made the decision <laughs> straight away there, David. You've got, got no answer. <laughs> yes? Oh, yes, they've got, they're really on your side this time. They were right last time as well. <laughs> so is that going to happen? Is it going this time? Yes, yeah, we'll get we, rid yeah, of them. All right, you're getting past it now, yeah. aren't you? <laughs> yeah, you just want to get rid of the bin. Okay, you're rejecting the booties brought in by Helen Gelzer. A note in a horn and the blues are born, is what she said. Hold it very tight there. I can feel it from here. A note in the horn. The horn might have made you think of cars. Indeed it did, but there's nothing else in the rhyme that would do that. Helen brought you in the booties, which might have been a hint to give this the boot. A note in. Now, if a note was a B, that could be the B in the bin. That'll give you the blues, they'd be gone. Dusty bin, you're done. Yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, yes. Look at look at the joy on Scylla's face. And I think David feels as good, don't you? You're so thrilled. Now, now you're gonna, don't tell me you love him now, he's gone. Huh? Everybody does that to me. He's a character, but once he's been rejected, you feel a lot better about it. Okay. Thank goodness he's gone. That means you go home with a good prize tonight. 
Two left on the table, and you can hear them both again. Remember the 15 red roses brought in by Linda Lou Allen, who said, your chance is going to pot, but after, you've scoffed the lot. That's what Linda said. George Melly brought you in the rusty nail. And he's just said, to double your chance tonight, say cheerio and sit tight. So, two left. A good position to be in now. <laughs> what do you say, Silla? Dining room suite. Really I would love a new dining room suite. She'd love a new dining room suite, really. What about David? What, do you, what would you like? <laughs> he don't really care now. No, he's so no, pleased the bin's gone. gone. Yeah. Um, what do you think? Get, get rid of the flowers, yeah. Okay, made that decision? Yeah. Yes. All right, then, you're going to reject the 15 Red Roses by Linda Llewellyn. She said, your chance is going to pot, but after you've scoffed the lot. Now, <laughs> look at you. Okay, your chance is going to pot. Pot has a connection with many things, cooking and gardening, for example, or even snooker. That might have meant what the 15 Red Roses meant, what Linda brought in there. After you've scoffed the lot. That sounds like something to do with eating, which again ties in with pot, from the first line. In fact, this is a dining table. Just take a look at this one. <laughs> no, it wasn't, wasn't what you thought. Not just a dining table, a dining table with a difference. After you've scoffed a lot on the dining table, it converts into the superb slate bed snooker table, complete with clubs, snooker balls, in fact, the whole kit. Now, you could have done with that, David, yes? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, not quite what you thought in Rosewood, but a fabulous prize. Thank you very much, Caroline. It has to go. Take it away, please. Oh, wow. Here we are. <laughs> so, okay. Moment of truth. Prize you're going home with tonight, and you're so pleased, honestly. <laughs> you're different people since that dusty bin went. Okay, you're going home with the prize that George Melly brought you in, the rusty nail. George said, to double your chance tonight, say cheerio and sit tight. Now, I know what you hope it is. You said you could do with one. Let's see what it is. George brought in the rusty nail. That could have a connection with the drink, as a rusty nail is a cocktail. Did you know that? Nope. Coming from Jersey, you should have known that. To double your chance tonight, double is a connection with drink, and the next line says, say cheerio and sit tight. That's got another two connections there with drink. There's also sit and sit tight. Well, you'll be drinking and sitting covered very well in this fabulous prize. Take a look at this. Come on. Okay, Sarah. This way. There you go. Now then. Ah. Go behind the bar. Oh. Oh. Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> A fabulous bar, the bar stools, and that dining room suite you wanted so much, huh? Oh, now, do you think this yeah. is better than the motor car or not? Yes. Yeah. I think uh, much, much better. Don't forget, we haven't finished. You got money, you won in the quiz, and Bonnie has that. How much was it, Bonnie? 420 pounds. 420 pounds. That's for you, Silla. Take hold of that. Fabulous. Well done. Take care. Have a good trip back to Jersey with all of this stuff. You've been a marvellous audience. Thank you very much for joining us. Till we see you next week. Good night, everybody. Goodbye. Calm down. Yeah. Hey, it's nice, you know. Calm down.